Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Dr. Salerno, um, the well control rule uh, is, is on the table right now. That, that rule is designed to improve safety for offshore production. Uh, I want to remind you, as in previous conversations that we've had, we have produced billions, with a B, billions of barrels of oil in the Gulf of Mexico and produced trillions of cubic feet of natural gas in the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, with the exception of Deepwater Horizon, uh, we have not had uh, extraordinary spills, major spills. We have, we have done it safely in this hearing room. I've put up uh, trends, uh, charts showing the trends in the number of spills that have occurred and the volume, the cumulative volume of spills that have occurred. In the case of Deepwater Horizon, I sat through the first phase of the trial, many days of it. The judge said that BP uh, exercised willful misconduct and gross negligence. Okay? They didn't say that the rules were flawed. Now, I actually commend you, I commend industry, I commend anyone who is looking at innovation, technology, and ways to improve safety. But I'm, str and, and also want to note, Interior has made improvements to safety and industry has made improvements to safety. What problem are you trying to fix with this rule? Excuse me. And, and I want to ask briefly, because yeah. I've got a couple of other uh, questions. No, I yeah. understand. Now, it, it, in essence, what we're trying to do is to react to the you know, hundreds of recommendations that we receive from the Deepwater Horizon um, reports, commissions, and so there's about a half a dozen or so reports, and we received hundreds of recommendations, many of them focused on well control. So the rule is an attempt to uh, uh, give, uh, to, to solidify, you know, uh, what uh, the best thinking is on how to, to lock in those improvements. Okay, so trying to, trying to apply lessons learned. Again, I respect that concept. The, the concern that I've got is that, and you and I have talked about this, the expertise within Interior. We heard over and over again from industry, and I want to make note, the state of Louisiana and our offshore, as you well know, we have more offshore energy production offshore of the Louisiana than all five other offshore producing states combined. Director, I, I, this rule, for example, with the 0.5 per pound margin, 60% of the wells drilled since 2010 don't meet that standard. This actually threatens safety. It doesn't improve it, it threatens safety. I'm very concerned about the expertise within your agency to write this rule. Again, we're hearing over and over again from industry, the lack of dialogue. Those are the folks that are the experts here. And I'm not saying we put them in charge of everything. You have an oversight responsibility. Those are the folks that are the experts. If they're telling us you're refusing to engage, I personally experienced refusal to engage when the Louisiana delegation, Gulf Coast delegation, asked for a meeting. And I appreciate the phone call, but, but we couldn't get a meeting with you to discuss this. Director, we have lost 25% of our oil and gas jobs in the state of Louisiana, 25%. According to the Woods McKenzie study done by the Gulf Economic Survival Team, they estimate that 55 per, a 55 percent reduction in exploration activity and a 35 percent reduction in production activities. Again, to a large degree, this is a solution in search of a problem. When you look at the statistics and you look at the fact that Deepwater Horizon was gross negligence and willful misconduct, it wasn't that the rules were flawed, and it fails to take into account all of the improvements that both interior and industry have led on. So, so how are you going to address, how is this an improvement in safety when 60% of the wells couldn't even comply with this standard? It, it lacks an understanding of the technology and industry. Well, it, I, I would disagree with you. Uh, the people who are involved in the development of this rule have decades of experience uh, working Doing within, what? The, within the industry and within our organization. Uh, the 5% margin. Uh, is a starting point. It's a definition. There was never any intent that that be rigidly applied in every situation. There is alternative compliance in the proposed rule and it will be reinforced uh, in, in the but final. The director, director, okay, first of all, you sat in this committee and told us that variance was going to be allowed for in the hydraulic fracturing rule as well. It was not. That, that, would, that did not come to fruition. Number two, why would you set a standard that the majority of companies would have to I'm, seek sir, a I, variance for. I, I don't know about the hydraulic fracturing. Okay, rule. well, let's I, stick I, to no. this topic. Why would the majority of companies have to seek a variance from a standard? Obviously, the standard is flawed. Well, how me, you, you, you know sir, how much it costs to do these production I, activities. Understood. You're and talking hundreds of millions I, or billions I want to of dollars. You, uh, how sir. are you going to give companies any degree of certainty that they can come in and make these investments when they have to rely okay. upon variance? As far as we have heard this, and as far as engagement with the industry, I communicated with you. We've met with them over 60 times. Uh, in the development of this rule. We've heard loud and clear the concerns there. And I've assured them when I meet with them, and, and I'm telling you again now, 
uh, we, we have modified the language in the rule to include more performance-based and more risk-based uh, language in the text and in the preamble, so it's very clear. And so you're making certainty. significant changes to the rule? The, it, it's, as far as how that, that provision would, would okay, be applied Okay, so what that practice, means is which is that, reflective warrants of how it's the done fact, that warrants this going back out for public comment to make sure that we understand the implications. Mr. Chairman, I want to be clear. A 35 percent reduction in offshore energy production would result in probably, I'm going to guess, somewhere around $1.5, $1.7 billion a year in reduced revenue. I want to remind my friends on the other side, this is the revenue stream that funds the Land and Water Conservation Fund. This is the revenue stream that funds the Historic Preservation Fund. These are also revenues that pay for everything from health care to veterans benefits and everything else for this country. One of the largest sources of revenue for the U.S. Treasury, my number is going to be a little bit off, but if I remember right, it's been $80 billion dollars, $80 billion has been brought into the federal government, and I think it's been the last 15 years from, the, from this revenue stream. I mean, if, if I go file a bill that affects revenues like this, do you realize the paygo of, of impacts that would happen on my bill and what I would have to do? Yet we're going to have this, no change in law, no change in law whatsoever, and this type of activity happening in a vacuum without industry participation. Mr. Chairman, I just want to urge this rule needs to go back out for public comment. 